What are some fun icebreaker games? Fun is a relative term, and so in this video, I'm gonna give you three icebreakers that are offer three different types of fun that will reach three different audiences. So there's a guarantee that by the end of this video, uh, one, probably all three, but at least one of them will be absolutely perfect for your group. And one of the exercises is called conversation roulette, so you know this video is gonna be good. Let's get into it. Three types of icebreaker games here. First of all, a framing of a game, right? For me, a game is anything that has an objective and some guidelines around it. And the dictionary would relatively agree with that. Um, I think they use the word rules, but uh, when I think about icebreaker games, I, I first wanna rewind and ask, what is the actual purpose or the objective? And for me, when I hear the word icebreaker, the purpose is to break the ice, to allow people to meaningfully connect and to maybe infuse a little bit of joy into a space. So the three types of icebreakers that I'm gonna walk through, one is gonna be fun and light, if that suits your group and your context where you're at. One is gonna be a little bit um, deeper and more meaningful, because sometimes uh, fun is actually meaningful, especially for introverts. Like crazy icebreaker doesn't usually mean fun. Uh, more deliberate, thoughtful conversation means fun. And so I have a really great exercise for that. And then lastly, to give some love to the introverts in the world, which is like half the population, I'm gonna share an icebreaker that is really, really introvert friendly. It's really great for extroverts and important for extroverts to actually do exercises like this, um, but it's a particularly introvert friendly exercise. So you've got fun and light, a little bit deeper and introvert friendly. Number one, fun and light is conversation roulette. So for conversation roulette, and you can do this virtually or in person, you just need to adapt it based on your context. Um, you need a stack of questions, ideally fun and light questions. In the link in the description, there is a free printable deck and a list of questions. All the questions in that list that are green are categorized as fun and light questions. Or if you have this deck of cards, we connect cards that have a bunch of uh, questions on them that are color coded. What I would do is keep a stack of green cards on your desk or put them on a table if you're in person with a group. And the group's objective is to burn through the deck as quickly as possible, sharing answers that could be true, could not be true, just guttural responses. Maybe you invite the group, if you're really trying to actually spark some connection, you invite all answers to be true, but guttural. Invite people to not think for too long about them. And the way that they would do that is if you're in person, standing in a circle around uh, this pile of questions, or virtually, you'd be holding up the questions and you'd have the group answer and in a particular order. And so you might establish that order first, or you might say, um, you might show them your gallery view on Zoom and just say, go in this order. And so you've got a list of questions here. And so if I pick this one up and it was, Stephen, what does that question say? What is something funny that has happened to you? Boom. Um, I just filmed two videos before this video and it was treachery. Uh, I was like, ah, and I'm now at this point in video number three, finding it kind of funny and light. Boom, that would be my response. Burn that question and then go to the next question. And the idea is to burn through the deck as quickly as possible. Now, each one of these questions you could probably talk about for 10 minutes. The goal is actually speed here. And so this icebreaker is really great to do quickly and to also serve as a brain warm up. I wouldn't do it too early in the morning. Um, but the idea of conversation roulette is that you're just going through and if you can add a little bit of game element to it if you want, that if somebody uh, pauses for longer than three seconds to respond to the question, then the group lovingly looks at them and goes, eh, and they get kicked out and you just keep going, burning through that deck until you've got one person standing. I would only do that variation in a group of people that I knew somewhat well, just FYI, because when you, any icebreaker that excludes someone is not very inclusive. And so only do that with a group that you've got a, a pretty good base of trust with. Up until this point in the video, you haven't been able to see this, uh, but on the other side, way around here, uh, is actually a kitchen. There's a lovely space rented in uh, Pittsburgh and one of the reasons I chose this space to film in today is there's this really lovely Mexican proverb um, that goes something like this. Conversation is food for the soul. And so the exercise that I'm gonna share with you next can create 
really, really good conversations, maybe even conversations that serve as food for the soul. Is that too much of a dad pun? So before I give you the name to this exercise, uh, I wanna share with you that Will, my co-founder and I, were leading a workshop with 282 people virtually. And uh, the exercise that I'm gonna share with you was by far the most liked and commented on and discussed thing that we shared in this entire 90 minute workshop. And it is a slight nuance on an old, I think old and tired activity. So the old tired activity is two truths and a lie. The slight nuance, and I believe that there is an immense amount of wisdom in the nuance, is two truths and a dream. So when you do truth, two truths and a lie, that's a really good way to figure out who's the best liar in your group. Depending on your context, probably not something that really like elevates what you want to uh, in, the, in the group vibe and culture. Whereas two truths and a dream, you have to spend a little bit of time thinking about, okay, I need to convert the, uh, the verb tense of this dream because it's something that I wanna do in the future. So you've gotta decide how exactly to break groups up for this. Um, what I would suggest is absolutely small groups for this. Conversation is food for the soul. Uh, you know, you can't have a really meaningful conversation if there's 18 people at a giant dining room table. And so similarly, whether you're virtual or in person, um, more intimate, meaningful conversations happen in groups of three to five. Definitely, definitely, definitely not more than seven. And so um, I would invite, if you're virtual, groups of three to four people to split out and to have whoever's name begins first in the alphabetical order to share two truths and a dream. And the group's aim is to guess and pick out what the dream is, what that person's dream is. What I love about this activity, and here's where the wisdom and the nuance comes in, is you learn two things that are true about them, but you also, about somebody's past and their story, but you also get to teleport into someone's future, and especially in a work context, when you find out what somebody's dream is, you collectively as an organization can work toward helping them make that happen. Full pause, you're smart enough to take that idea and make it your own. The idea is two truths and a dream. Boop. Quick pause in our video. Uh, we've shared two icebreakers, I'm about to share a third. I would love for you to break the ice with me. Part of breaking ice is actually letting people's voice be heard. Literally when people's larynx works and you hear someone's voice, you hear them tell a story, share a piece of who they are, um, that breaks the ice. And so if you've been watching these videos or if this is your first time on the channel, there's hundreds of videos on the channel to help leaders and educators make connection engagement easy, go ahead in the comments and share a little bit about your context because the more I learn about who you are, the more I start to tailor my videos and my exercises and the tips and ideas and strategies that I share across the channel. And now back to our regular programming. Third exercise is a combination of two that I really loved. One that I've done for years and one that I just learned about on Facebook from a lovely gentleman named Mark Friedrich who uses, ah, uses um, our WeConnect cards. So this is a deck of cards that Will and I designed with questions on them to help groups break the ice. And he posted a video on Facebook. These are being used in 80 plus countries um, around the world. And so uh, almost every day I see some different unique way that someone's using the deck to help break the ice and, and meaningfully connect their groups. And what I loved about Mark's su suggestion was um, taking We Connect Walks. So the deck of cards called We Connect Cards. The idea of We Connect Walks is pair up with someone each with a question and go on a walk and let that question serve as the key that opens the first door to the conversation and you choose the time limit. It could be walk 10 minutes this way and 10 minutes back. You can do it virtually by splitting people up into breakouts of pairs and inviting people to join just from a mobile device so that they can actually move around even if they're just pacing around in a living room in the middle of winter. Um, the idea is to take a walk with this. Now the activity I wanna combine it with is me to we. And if you remember from earlier in the video, this is the more introvert friendly exercise. The reason we named it Me To We is brainstorming 101. It's great to spend time thinking and brainstorming with yourself first and then in a group. And so if I were to ask you this question and then say, sit with it for 60 seconds or go on a walk for five minutes thinking about your answer and come back and we're gonna share your responses out in the large group or in small group breakouts. So take this idea of me first, right? Ponder first, think first, give space 
and silence for people to actually think of their response to any given question that you're offering and then have them come back and sh share answers or just give the group some silence altogether and then say, now split off and go have a, a chat with your partner or small group. I believe information should be free. So there's a free printable version of the deck in the link below. And if you want the actual box shipped to you, that costs money. I'm Chad, have an awesome day.